like you? Strong-headed and willing to take the risk? Well, look at me. I am my father's daughter. the chance. Too little money, too many lonely times, too much competition. But Papa, there are stronger voices calling me. Juliet, and Joan of Arc, maybe even Peter Pan. Now look what you did. It's all over the floor. Ugh. Oh, you spilled a whole box of cereal. Brent, let me do that. Thanks, honey. I really appreciate that. How about some coffee? Uh, I'm fine. This juice is plenty. Well, then have some breakfast. You hardly have enough to keep... I'm up. fine. Stop nagging. Can I bring Steve over after school? Sure. I don't think so, Brett. Why not? Because Mom hasn't been feeling well, and she doesn't need two maniacs running through the house. Mom! Stop whining. You heard your sister. Oh, that's me. I gotta run. Oh, Mom, I wrote out the checks for the utility bills. Just sign them and drop them in the mail. Oh, thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. You're not even gonna be home this afternoon. Who says I'm going anywhere? What about Cindy's open house? Well, that's right. That's today, isn't it? It's not important, Mom. Oh, but it is important. It'll be so crowded, you won't even get to meet any of my teachers. <sighs> you better not count on me, honey. It's okay. Brett, it's almost eight. Oh. Bye. Bye, honey. Sorry I was late, Mrs. Bergman. Mom doesn't mind. See you, Mom. I'm so nervous I couldn't eat my breakfast. Well, you know, Cindy's getting the lead. We've rehearsed together and she's terrific. Sherry, she will. Just watch. talking to the mothers in the carpool, and we decided your mother shouldn't have to drive anymore. I was wondering when this would happen. It's all right. She doesn't mind. Mom, Mrs. Scott's there now. I told you that. You know she's been late several times. And twice last week, she didn't show up at all. Because she was sick. I know, dear. That's why we decided. You can hardly expect our mother to let a drunk drive us to school. What time is it? I'll call and tell her if you like. No, I'll tell her. Thanks for the ride, Mrs. Bergman. We still want you to ride with us, Cindy. Actress? Ridiculous. Does she have any idea how difficult a life acting can be? Any idea at all? I'm not sure it matters. She has her dream, and not unlike you, William, with that s steely Thornton determination. Well, I won't hear any more talk of actresses in New York. It would be like sending her on a rocket ship to the moon. It's just a child's fantasy, Lizzie. Nothing more. You sell your daughter short. And don't forget, she has your fiery temper. Fiery, is it? Ha! She'll see a bonfire before I let her do this. That's very good, Jason. Last, but very, very good. All right, come on down. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Time to get nervous. I'm ready to make my choices. Oh, first, I want to say, all of you did very, very well. And I can't imagine having a better cast. 
I don't suppose it's any surprise. Let's hold your applause down, please. I've been assigned punch bowl duty for the open house, so I want to make this fast. Emily Patterson, you'll be Wilma Blanchard. And the part of Sally. Cindy Stott. Congratulations, Cindy. <laughs> Janelle Andrews, welcome to Withrow. And you will be playing Sally's mother, Elizabeth Thornton. The role of Roger Harris goes to David Allison. Sally's father will be Jason. And Margot is Miss Dillon. Friendly stage manager, you know, props, costumes, sweeping up. Uh, you forgot your rehearsal schedule. Oh, thank you. Well, I'll see you later. Mitch Steven! That was Mitch Steven! Well, listen, I gotta go. My mom's meeting me in Spanish class, but I'll see you later. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Oh. Cindy? Mom, what are you doing here? Well, I couldn't let your open house go by, could I? I know how important it is to you. It's not important. You didn't have to bother. Hi, Cindy. Hi, Ron. Hello. Hi, how are you? Well, I'm here now. I'm not leaving till I've met some of your teachers. Where do we start? Come on, I'll introduce you. Oh. Hi, Cindy. Mrs. Sheridan, I'd like you to meet my mom, Mrs. Stott. Oh, Mrs. Stott, I'm very pleased to meet you. Mrs. Sheridan. Forgive me, I'm just a little confused. For some reason, I have it in my mind that it should be Mr. Sheridan. Mom, Mr. Sheridan is my English teacher and drama coach. And my husband. <laughs> well, I'm sure you're interested in Cindy's progress. She's a very hard worker, and she is improving in her grade steadily. I guess that means she's not very good at algebra. <laughs> no. No, that isn't what I meant at all. Math was never my cup of tea, either. Oh, I always passed my courses. It's just that I never had much of a head for figures. I always wondered what good it was, anyway. Come on. We got a lot of other classes to visit. All right. It's very nice meeting you, Mrs. Sheridan. Yes, Mrs. Stott. And I'm very happy to have met you, too. All right. Maybe I shouldn't have said that about algebra not being important. It doesn't matter, Mom. Oh, Cindy, honey, would you wait for me here, please? I'm just going to go into the little girl's room. Mom! Don't you have anything stronger? Yes, I do. My wife tells me I made the coffee so strong it could strip paint. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Dodd, this is my husband, Mr. Sherrigan. Mm. So Mrs. Sherrigan finally we meet. Well, you must be very proud, Mrs. Stott. Cindy getting the lead in the school play. The lead? Cindy, why don't you tell me? It just happened. Oh. <laughs> well, I guess I shouldn't be surprised. I believe that talent is often inherited, don't you? Well, were you a performer? Long time ago. I was a professional dancer. Mom, Mr. Sherrigan isn't interested in all this. Yes, I am. Very interested. 
Well, I danced the lead in a few public concerts, things like that. Then I got pregnant with Cindy. Well, with a kid in diapers and bills to be paid, and my husband was not too reliable. And housework to do. I just never managed to get back into it. Thank you. Mom, we better go. There's people in line. All right. It's so nice to meet you, Mr. Sherrigan, Mrs. Sherrigan. We'll see you at the play. Oh, by all means. How do you do? Did you have to tell him your whole life story? The man asked me, didn't he? It may interest you to know that I had a life of my own once. I used to be a whole person. That's just your old mom. I used to live in your house. I know that. All right. Let's stop it. Try to show a little respect for me, will you? Whether you feel it or not. Ready to go. Come You told me about him cueing you on your lines. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a friend, nothing more. A boyfriend. When we decide to announce our engagement, you'll be the first to hear. Oh. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Hmm. Coming to my house tonight? It's your Saturday to sleep over. I can't. Why not? My mother doesn't want me to disturb your mother. Don't, Sherry. Sorry. It just hurts me to see this happening to you and Brett. Look, I gotta go. If I don't get supper ready, Brett starves. What would I do without you? At least someone to talk to. Someone who understands the situation. Yeah, even if she can't do anything. Some help that is. <sighs> see ya. Where's Mom? In her room. She's not feeling well. Put the groceries away, will you? The milk's getting warm. Come on, Jimmy. Mom? <laughs> okay, people, quiet down now, please. Got a couple announcements before Mr. Sheridan gives you notes. Um, Nancy still hasn't seen about three of you for some measurements, and you know who you are. So this afternoon, without fail. Uh, Fred needs to know how many tickets you'll need for opening night. Uh, you got a limit of four per person, so if you don't need them all, tell him he can pass them on to some worthy being. Okay. <coughs> All right. Starting tomorrow, no scripts. Everybody has to be line perfect. I know my lines. Of course, Mitch will be here to prompt you if it's necessary, but uh, why don't you surprise me by not having to have Mitch bail you out? OK. Now on to some notes for tomorrow. <laughs> well, I, don't, I love plays, though. You know, I'd rather read a play than see a movie. There's some actress, you know that? Thanks. Someday I'm going to be a real actress. That's what I want to do. Go to college and study theater, and then New York, here I come. Of course, getting there is something else again, but well, if I can't, I'll just go to New York and study. Do it that way. Oh, I won't be needing any tickets opening night, so uh, like if your family could use some extras, just tell Fred you can have mine. Not even for your mom and dad? Uh, no, they won't be needing them, probably. Mitch, that's terrible. 
Some things are better, some things are worse. <laughs> so this is where you live, huh? If you'd invite me in, I could uh, finish queuing your line. Oh. Uh, Mitch, I don't think so. Come on, you don't want Janelle to be letter perfect while you flub a few, do you? How do you know about her? Who doesn't? She's a pill. Come on, what do you say? All right. Mom? Brett? Anybody home? I'll get us some ginger ale, or would you rather have something else? We have milk, tea. Oh, ginger ale's fine. She really is sick. And what does that mean? Um, Janelle had said something the other day about her not feeling well, but she's sick, Cindy. Mitch, please leave. If you come with me. Can't you see I have to take care of my mother? No, I can't. Cindy, you had nothing to do with getting her in the condition she's in. Just leave her that way. Mitch, don't you know how I feel? How embarrassing this is for me? Get out! Please get out! There's plenty of pancakes. Anybody ready? Cindy? No. I have an interview this morning. For a job. It's nothing great, but it's pretty hard to get anything these days unless you've been trained for something. At least I can work in a dime store. Cosmetics, I hope. Anyway, it'll be nice to have some extra money coming in, won't it? Well, I guess I better start to get ready. Wish me luck. Good luck, Mom. this morning. Hospital emergency room. My dad wrapped his car around a streetlight last night. The car was totaled, but he made it out with a couple scratches and bruises. Mitch, that's awful. Yeah. It's awful every time he does it, but when he's drunk, that's what happens. Drunk? Yeah, out of his gourd, as usual. And they took his license away, so he doesn't have that. Took that away a long time ago. Get this. Without a car, I will have to take him to court in a cab. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Funny. You've got some sense of humor. And why are you dumping all this on Cindy? And me? Why me? He knows about Mom, Sherry. I guess you could say we have something in common. You poor guy. Your father? And your mom? Oh, and my mom, too. She was still passed out this morning as I came to school. I don't even know if she knows about my dad yet. She's been drunk for uh, two days. <laughs> Look, I don't know what to say. I don't know that maybe I shouldn't just leave the two of you alone to talk about this, okay? There's a Jewish proverb that says if you all stand around in a circle and throw your problems into the middle, you'll gladly take your own problems back. Boy, wouldn't I? I'll see you in Spanish class, Cindy. Bye, Mitch. See you later. Mitch, why are you telling me all this? I guess a person needs to unload every now and then. See, I want you to understand that it's all right to talk about it. I mean, it helps. It really helps to talk. There's a group I belong to. They listen. Uh, it's made up of kids with alcoholic parents. 
I didn't say my mom was an alcoholic. All right, she drinks too much sometimes, I know that. But I don't need a group. It's a personal problem. We can handle it on our own. Well, <clears throat> I can't force you. I won't even nag you about it. You're gonna have to want it yourself. But I'll tell you, when you are sick and tired of always being sick and tired, we meet every Thursday at the church on West Canal. Mitch? I'm awfully sorry about your mom and dad. That's their problem. See ya. It smells so good. Meatloaf. We're going to celebrate. You got the job? I got the job. <laughs> We're going to have meatloaf and whipped potatoes, and I even splurged and bought us a layer cake. And then after dinner, we'll all do something together. Play cards, scrabble, whatever you kids want to do. Mom, I'm so proud of you. <laughs> 62 points. Better watch out, Sandy. I'm catching up to you. That's all right, Mom. The game's not over yet. Anybody want anything? Oh, I'll have some milk. Okay. I'll get it, Mom. No, that's all right. I'll get it. You, you work on your word. Well, come on, Brett. Make a move or else the game's over. Six lousy points. Well, lady and gentlemen, I have the word to end the game. Twelve points. I'm on a tiles, and the game is over. <laughs> That's no word. It certainly is. Adagio. It means slow. Like a slow movement in ballet. I know something about dancing, young man, so don't fight with me about it. <laughs> Look it up. <laughs> All right. It's okay, Mom. We believe you. You won. No, no, I'm going to prove my word. What's that? Adagio. A D A G I O. You spelled it wrong. You lose your turn. Ah. I think I do. today with the serenity prayer. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Amen. Now we'll go on to the roll call. Hi, I'm Mitch. Hi, Hi Mitch. Hi, I'm Terry. What's Mrs. Sharon doing here? Hi, I'm Ron. You? She's our sponsor. Hi, I'm Julie. Hi, Hi Julie. Julie. She's Hi, with I'm a group Ron. called Alan. Hi, Ron. It's, uh... It's kind of like this, only it's for adults living with an alcoholic. Yeah, Mr. Sherrigan's been sober eight years. Mr. Sherrigan? Surprise. They're everywhere. 
Then my friend and old man started to argue over something really stupid like uh, who is the most valuable player in the league. They were really going at it. And then I jumped in the middle and started yelling at my friend. Anyway, I got mad and said some things and ended up throwing my friend out of the house. Then I got into it with my old man. We had a real blow up. I almost hit him, I was so mad. That's it. Hi, I'm Julie. Uh, hi, Julie. Hi, Julie. Ron, <clears throat> your first mistake was to interfere. Next time, will you butt out? If your dad and your best friend are having an argument, it's their argument, not yours. Even if your dad is drunk, don't try to fight his battles for him. Hi, I'm Terry. Hi, Terry. Hi, Terry. If you'd have been thinking, you could have avoided the whole bad scene. You can't argue with a bottle. When your dad's drunk, man, split. Leave him alone and stay clear. <sighs> Probably the most important thing you can learn is that uh, you won't get the alcoholic to stop drinking him. It's not up to you. He's got to want to stop, and that's the only way it's going to work. You make it sound so hopeless. Have you ever hidden her liquor so she can't drink? What'd she do? She went out and spent good money on more, right? Next time, don't hide the liquor. Don't plead with her. Don't nag. Don't threaten to run away. But also, don't, don't clean her up and don't pick her up. And when she finally starts sinking to the bottom, and I mean to the bottom, maybe then she'll start looking for help. And only then. I know. Where's Brett? You told him he could spend the night at Steve's. Don't you remember? Mm. <sighs> Do me a favor and call the store and tell him I won't be in today. What reason should I give? Tell him I'm sick. Mom, I went to a meeting last night. An Alateen meeting. What's for kids with alcoholic parents? It's a place where they can go and talk things over. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Are you trying to tell me that you went to some kind of a meeting? And you told them that your mother's an alcoholic? Come and drunk? No, it's nothing like that. Yeah. Ungrateful little brat. All the things I do for you, and you do something like that to me. It's not easy, you know, holding down a job, trying to squeeze out some kind of existence for the three of us. And you stand up in public and call me a drunk? Mom, I didn't do that. Let me tell you something, miss. I can quit whenever I please, you hear that? You don't believe it? Well, I think these costumes are clean, but they need pressing. match. Uh huh. They need pressing, fitting. I don't know what you gotta do to them. Just have them ready for tomorrow's dress rehearsal. Got it. Got it. Good. Here. You gonna come to tonight's meeting? No. Why not? You were just getting started. Mitch, I don't need Alateen. My mom's not an alcoholic. She's quit drinking. She hasn't had a drink in nearly a week now. Oh, I'm glad to hear that, but... She hasn't spoken to me since I went to the last meeting. It's okay. 
As long as she doesn't drink, I don't care if she ever talks to me again. Let's just drop it, all right? It's too big. Oh. Well, maybe I can do something about that. Here. Yeah. You excited about tomorrow night? Oh, every time I think about it, my heart wants to pound out of my chest. <laughs> I know the feeling. It's opening night, Bright. Were you ever nervous before a performance? <laughs> Honey, my hands used to sweat. <laughs> I could hardly breathe. And I didn't hear a word that anybody ever said to me. And then the lights begin to dim, the curtain opens, and you take those first few steps. And it just seems like the most natural thing in the world. There now. That's better. Now, why don't you take it off, and I'll sew it for you. Thanks. <laughs> You know him. He's waiting for just the right time to discuss your plans. Give him time. But, Mama, I don't have time. If we don't have it out soon, I'll simply explode. Hush, Sally. He'll hear you. And unless you want to have it out right now, I suggest you settle down and get ready for our company. Honestly, Mama, why must it be so hard for him to let go? Go on, please. Please, and more projection. All right, see? I'm all smiles and compliments. Mr. Harris, so nice to see you again. Miss Blanchard, such a lovely gown. Papa. All right, stop. Uh, let's go back and take your entrance again, Jason. All right. Cindy? Is that you? Yeah. How is the technical rehearsal? Rotten. Well, a, a bad rehearsal means a good performance. That's what Mr. Sherrigan says, too, but I'm not so sure. Oh, what you need is a nice, hot, relaxing bath. You've got plenty of time before the performance. Mom, I'm really scared. I know, but you're going to be wonderful. Trust me. <laughs> I'm turning in. And I suggest, little girl, that you do the same. We'll finish our little discussion in the morning. No, Papa, I want to finish it now. Haven't you said a million times that I grow up to be just like you? Strong-headed and willing to take the risks? Well, look at me. I am my father's daughter. Oh, but Sally, there are so many reasons for oh, you. Oh, there's always so many reasons not to take the chance. Too little money, too many lonely times, too much competition. But, Papa, there are stronger voices inside me. Juliet and Joan of Arc, maybe even Peter Pan. <laughs> They're determined to be heard. Oh, Papa, please, I need your blessing. Sally Thornton, the actress. It's a new sound, but I guess it's one I can get used to. Oh, Papa, thank you. There's three days on the train, and you know you get sick if you ride backwards. <laughs> oh, and then that hotel in New York. How can we know it's safe enough for a pretty girl like you? Mama, don't be frightened for me. I've ridden the train before. This one just goes a little farther, that's all. And Miss Houston promises the hotels are as safe as any in Indiana. <laughs> Mama, please be happy for me. I'll never be far from your heart, after all. And every time I look out over the footlights, I'll just burst when I see you sitting there, beaming like you are now.
girl. Mrs. Stop. Mrs. Stop. Oh, excuse me. Mrs. Stop. Oh, Mr. Shark. Wasn't well, she wonderful? What are you doing here? Well, I'm your stage manager, remember? Props, costumes, sweeping up. It was horrible. Yeah, it was. <clears throat> Don't think you're the only person ever embarrassed by a drunk. I hate her for the things she does. And I hate all of them who are out there laughing at her. And I hate my father for letting this happen to us. I hate them all. That's a lot of hate. Cindy, give it a try. Come to the meetings. If you're not satisfied, I'll gladly refund your misery. I've never wanted to help anybody like I want to help you. Why'd you let me sleep so long? Oh. Well, I don't know why I'm so tired this morning. I do. It's because you were smashed out of your head last night. Cindy, I won't have a daughter of mine talk to me like that. You don't even remember, do you? You can't remember stumbling up on stage last night in front of everyone, yelling out, this is my little girl, dropping roses all over the place. You don't even care. You don't care about anything but that lousy bottle. You get drunk and you pass out, and I always feel like it's my fault. Like if I hadn't been born, you could have gone on and had your marvelous stage career. Well, not anymore. I won't take the blame for your drinking anymore. <laughs> oh, Sandy.
Hi, I'm Cindy. Hi, Hi Cindy. Cindy. I know now that I'm powerless over alcohol and that my life has become unmanageable. It's my mom. She does think she can't help, and I hated her for it. But I'm starting to see that there's nothing I can do about her drinking. Well, the more I try, the more miserable I make myself. So I... I'm gonna learn to uh, make peace with myself and with Mom. I guess I gotta let her live her life the way she wants to. I, I make a life for myself. It's like what someone said last time. You gotta learn to detach yourself from the problem without detaching yourself from the person. I'm gonna try. That's all. It took real guts to say that, lady. They say the first step's the hardest. I don't know. I was in my room. Maybe she went to bed. Let's try and get her in bed. No, leave her. On the floor? Mom's an alcoholic. It doesn't mean she's bad or she doesn't love us. It means she's sick. Well, the best way we can help her is to leave her alone. When she's drunk, we stay out of her way. And when she makes a mess, she cleans it up herself. Well, maybe that way she'll begin to see her problem. And just maybe she'll go for help. You want to go skating? OK. Go get your skates. We love you, Mom, more than anything. But you're a big girl now. You gotta start taking care of yourself. Finally, when you're sick and tired of being sick and tired. Is it going to be all right? Everything's gonna be fine.